I think that nigga set that shit up. I think that was set up. He paid them niggas for that. And it was rightfully so. He 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 did the right thing. Like he's a good kid, smart kid. So um he got some white boy behind him saying, hey man, just pay some fucking thugs, man, to fucking come down here, man, and just you fucking look like a fucking gangster, bro. You fucking look like a fucking gangster, bro. Just fucking pay him off, man. Just give him like twenty dollars, bro. They'll come down and, and just look like a fuck. They'll probably just love to be on camera, bro. Just give him like twenty dollars, bro, and they'll fucking do it, bro. You look like a fucking gangster. So I think he paid them motherfuckers off to come confront him, and he stand there and be like, "Oh, bro, I ain't know none of that, bro. I ain't know none of that, bro. I ain't know none of that, bro. You pull me to the side, bro, on everything, bro." on the Big Facts Podcast channel only because a lot of the viewers, subscribers from the Big Facts Podcast channel don't even know about this fucking channel for whatever fucking reason. So I have to put it in both places, but it lives on the Big Homes Network. Come on over here. This is what we got over here. All right. The baby just killed the nigga in Walmart. So he was in, he was at home, he was in Charlottesville, whatever the fuck like that, and let me just try to rob him in Walmart. Firstly, let me give you a little background on the baby. I don't even like the name. I guess you can see that I don't like the nigga. I don't like him because as a street nigga, I was telling Big C this shit, man. When we talked about, um was talking about, you know, getting a bitch and, and, and tell, having a having a successful side bitch. I told him, as a, if you were ever a real street nigga, those things that you learn, it's kind of like you went to college. The things, just because you're not working in what you got your degree for, doesn't mean that you can't, you got a degree for uh, biometric, fucking quantification, whatever the fuck like that, but you working at McDonald's, that's not to say that you won't be making a sandwich and say, this has fucking binomial, bionormal cool fucking bacteria on it. You can still see those things that you learn because you went to four years of college. It's all you fucking pumped in your head, so you can you still have that trade in your mind. Um, do you need me to simplify that? Like, if you have a welding trade, you know how to weld, you went to school for welding, but now you're a fucking truck driver, you might go outside and, and try to take your, your the, the top off your load and you can see that they did a, a corkscrew weld at the fucking seams and they did a, they, they TIG welded or MIG welded or stick welded, whatever the fuck, you know what I'm saying? You can still, you still have that talent. So... As a street nigga, just because you came over into into like civilized civilization, doesn't mean that you still don't have those street nigga skills. And one of the street nigga skills is making bitches fall in love with you. It doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying about no, you know that bitch look ho. We gonna do we just fucking that's all it is. It's not gonna work like that because you are gonna do shit that the bitches love and she's gonna fucking. So it's not gonna work like that. So with this. I can just look at a nigga, man, and just like, nah, my nigga, that ain't what, they ain't what going on. That's not, that, they ain't really, it's something wrong with that. I can just look at a nigga face like, that nigga's a fucking snake. That nigga's a liar. Just the way he moved, the way his pants sagged, the kind of shoes he got on. It, like, your words aren't matching your shoes. You know what I'm saying? You know, uh, Beanie Siegel said, your, your handshake ain't matching your smile. Uh-uh, you foul. Like, it's that kind of shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, the, the stains on your pants ain't matching your haircut. Like, it's something off with a nigga. You know what I'm saying? So, I can just... W what this nigga got going on, plus with the little research that I had to do to do this show. And plus the fact I had I had 
accidentally, I guess, got on to um, one of his videos. I don't know what the fuck I was looking at Charlotte for. Must have been an artist that hit me up from there. Um, and I got on to his shit, and I was using him as a template for one of the artists that I was working with down here. Like, see, this nigga has this, this, and it. Like, you know what I'm saying? He has his image together. You got holes in the pool, whatever like that. And then I went to one of his videos and this nigga got black flags, niggas in black shirts in the video. The His uncle character coming up talking about niggas trying to take your block down the street and he just the gorilla captain and shit like that. But then you go to another video. I'm not talking about the holes. You go to another video. This nigga got a whole Panther outfit, the Carolina Panthers. The, he got the... Deion Sanders bandana on with the Carolina Panthers on it, face paint, uh, Panthers jersey on, and he just hugging white folks like, oh, don't you love the Panthers? Yeah, the Panthers are fucking great. Hold on, dog. Hold on, dog. You were just in a fucking video with black rags and Dracos with it, like with dirties on them. And you was talking that gangster shit how you love to murder niggas. This is what I'm talking about, my nigga. This is what I'm saying, like, dog. It ain't even so much how niggas just be woofing about shit. It's the fact that these niggas be talking about this shit. They be talking about murdering songs. Like, that shit is what it is. Like, that shit is like, like, it don't do nothing to your whole physical body or your mind. Like, that shit don't bother a nigga. Like, on, on one body. One fucking body like that shit don't matter. And these niggas be talking like they serial killers. And that bothers me because it's like, my nigga, you promote some shit that you don't even like. You squirmish like a motherfucker. You don't even like to watch scary movies. But you get in this booth and you just Michael Myers on crack. And that bothers me, dog. So, when you around this whole smiling, great picture, guys. Wanna take a selfie? Hey, guys, you wanna get beer later? What the fuck? My nigga, you were just on the song, whooping the bowl, gonna break up my wrist. And I'm telling you, dog, I told you, look, dog, I might start a whole new show called The Trap Door, because I was telling y'all about what I call The Trap Door. The Trap Door is no longer and it might just be the rap door, but I'm gonna call it the trap door because there's no longer a certain knock that you have to have in order to get into this rap game. That was me, y'all. That was me. You can just, hey, open the door and, and motherfucker will open the door now. Anybody can get in, there's no vetting system. So we can go from Dolph to Lil Skies, Gucci, Lil Pump. Um, Gotti, uh, Lil Xan. You know what I'm saying? We saw Post Malone. We saw Iggy Azalea, especially, do this shit. Come through this fucking, uh, rapping like a down south bitch. This nigga talking about saucing on some, you know what I'm saying? He was talking about some trap shit too. Using the gangster rap shit to come in because it's the easiest way to get in. If you talk about dope and guns, we'll let you in. There's no nothing. And because the powers that be have snatched our rug of talent from under our feet, everything is decimated. And I've said this before, but everything is decimated and that's the issue. If this game went back to you have to be talented, then people like the baby probably could talk about shit that they want to talk about, like football, butterflies, rainbows, but because, and maybe in a creative way, but because everyone sees the trap door as the easiest, easiest way into the music business, everyone is just, and there's no guard at the door, they've assassinated, the powers that be have assassinated the guard at the door, and they snatched the rug of talent from under our feet. And those two moves have destroyed our culture altogether because the top motherfuckers in the game right now in an African-American game are all fucking Hispanic. Lil Pump, 6'9", Cardi B. 
and they try like fuck to get Nicki Minaj out that seat so Cardi B can be king. Queen. So, the baby just shot a nigga. He just shot and killed a nigga at Walmart because the nigga tried to rob him. He's promoting a project. I think that the uh, project he's promoting is called Blank Blank or some shit like that. I haven't listened to it because as street niggas once again, even though you're out of that, you still in this on some shit like if your mind was set to street niggas, let me tell you what street niggas feel. If the nigga don't live it, I can't listen to it. If you don't live it, I can't listen to it. It's fairy tale. We want to hear some shit that actually has danger inside of it. You know what I'm saying? If he did rapping and fuck that shit because we no longer admire talent and putting words together and shit like that. Um, Biggie, all the great artists did this. They, they, they were good at painting pictures. Uh, Eminem talked about going on killing sprees. It didn't matter that he actually didn't do it because he was so talented. You know what I'm saying? And that will be the difference between the golden age of hip hop and what we have now. You get auto-tune, Xanax, talk about dope bitches and guns, and you got a hit album or a single and got streams and shit like that. You know, so they, they fucked it up. Lil Baby killed the nigga at Walmart. The nigga dead. Lil Baby is not a troublemaker. He's never been in trouble. I think that nigga played football in school or some shit like that. Good kid. Great kid. No record. So he has a whole carry concealed license. So a nigga trying him in his own city, first of all, what they say is niggas know that you a hoe. Niggas know if they'll try I've never heard of a nigga trying to rob a nigga at Walmart. First of all, that sounds so fucking on or this why let me tell you what I think happened, my nigga. I think that you told that nigga the same way. Let me break it down. This nigga, the baby, just had a situation in Atlanta when he was shooting, or whatever the fuck he was at. He had a situation, I think it was Atlanta. He had these niggas, he was doing a video shoot. Big production, had a whole bunch of real cameras and everything, whatever. Um, and had a white bitch in the video as the lead. And I think that's it. Like, I think this nigga, I think this is really a, like a white boy for real. Like, you know, one of them niggas who are white boy inside. Like, I'm thinking about this shit now. But he was shooting a video and shit like that. And then here come a whole group of niggas. And was like, hey, man, it's my city, bro. He like, oh, I ain't with all that check-in shit. It's my city, bro. What's going on, bro? Who signed your permission slip? What? Who signed your permission slip? Like, that's, what the fuck? I think that nigga set that shit up. I think that was set up. He paid them niggas for that. And it was rightfully so. He 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 did the right thing. Like he's a good kid, smart kid. So um he got some white boy behind him saying, hey man, just pay some fucking thugs, man, to fucking come down here, man, and just you fucking look like a fucking gangster, bro. You fucking look like a fucking gangster, bro. Just fucking pay him off, man. Just give him like twenty dollars, bro. They'll come down and you look like a fuck. They'll probably just love to be on camera, bro. Just give him like twenty dollars, bro, and they'll fucking do it, bro. You look like a fucking gangster. So I think he paid them motherfuckers off to come confront him, and he stand and be like, "Oh, bro, I ain't know none of that, bro. I ain't know none of that, bro. I ain't know none of that, bro. You pull me to the side, bro, on everything, bro." So I think that shit was staged. So now you didn't told a nigga that you gonna run a skit with him in Walmart. Except you actually kill a nigga. And that's, that's a really far-fetched, and I might be reaching on that one. But I'm saying, dawg, you really can't put nothing past these rap niggas nowadays, man. Just think back in your mind to what these fuck niggas and did. And these little hoes and did trying to get on. Like, this shit is really starting to become a pastime that motherfuckers do in college, dawg. If I go through the list of motherfuckers that are now doing music, man, you'll be appalled. You'll be a fucking pawn. 
at motherfuckers who are now doing music and they just do it. Like, they just have all kind of retarded ass gimmicks. And they do this as a pastime in college. Why they're doing this? Why they're doing that? And who the fuck knows? You might just blow up the shit. Because we no longer have talent and there's nobody at the door. So who's going to stop you? It's like American Gangster, just direct to the fucking customers. You put the shit out, people go to it a little bit, then the power that be sprinkle that fucking success on it. And if you black, that's going to get you killed. If you any other fucking race, you're going straight to the top. So I believe the nigga set some shit up. Like I said, it's far-fetched because the nigga did die, but like I said, I don't put nothing past niggas trying to get in this game with because it's like, it's money on the line. You got to think about it how niggas think about it. Niggas think about it like, I can be living like the Migos and shit like that. My whole family be taken care of. It's niggas who will real deal die for their family. It's niggas who will go do life for their family. What nigga won't just, you know what I'm saying, just, fuck it, my family be straight. So I'm just saying, don't put nothing past nobody. If you a person that's working with an artist right now, and he has these kind of schemes and gimmicks and buying likes and buying uh, fucking views and all that faggot ass shit. No, like, dog, you need to get away from that nigga. Anything that's fake and not organic, man, get the fuck away from it because it's going to fuck you up. So he get the nigga to come in Walmart, try to rob him. Well, let's say it wasn't a uh, scheme or whatever like that. So the nigga try to rob him in Walmart because he feel like that nigga is that much of a fucking bitch. He try to rob him and now he got a righteous kill. You got a care conceal license. The whole, all the police love you because you was a high school football player. You didn't kill the nigga. Ain't no jail time as a righteous kill. And now hit you too up. You too old. You didn't pump some niggas out in Atlanta. Now you didn't kill the nigga that tried to rob you. You talking this this trap shit, which obviously is not fucking. I don't listen to me, my nigga. Dog, listen to me. It's motherfuckers who will actually go and shoot a gun at the range. Go and buy some weed and sell that shit for way retarded ass low prices just to say that they did the shit. Just to say that they did it. Oh, that nigga, yeah, he know I, he know I was selling dope. I had plenty of dope. A white boy can go out here and buy, um, let me, let me step, let me, let me back off this shit. I don't want to get nobody no idea. But, Go out here, spend a little money, buy you a pound. You ain't, uh, but you won't have to fuck with niggas. And see, niggas be living vicariously through their homeboys and shit like that. And niggas be co-signing that shit because you they homeboy, you they cousin. So it's like, fuck that shit. Man, we all gonna be on, fuck that shit. So it just, it just all watered down now, man. And I just, I just ain't with that shit. So fuck that shit. I'm the guard at the door. And we're going to talk about this shit, man, because there's something about this nigga. If you go look at the nigga catalog, he not like that. He not built like that. He don't want nothing like that. And we finna stop this shit, man. We had Lil Tay. We had Lil fucking Yay, Lil Zan, all these fucking faggots just coming to the game. Why is real niggas with real talent that's coming home from prison? They ain't got no way. But they giving out everything to these little college kids and they got shit going on. Lil Punk was already rich. Tekashi 6 9 ain't never had to struggle. Many folks out here with real fucking talent. They can't get a look at all. They point out who the fuck they want to succeed. And the main thing is, if a nigga got a real message, they won't let the nigga breathe. So fuck that. I'm on every whole ass nigga, lame ass gimmick nigga head. Fuck it. Big Homes Network. This is in hindsight. Like I said, make sure you come to the Big Homes Network. This is going to be on the Big Facts Podcast channel also. Just so y'all can see what's going on. Make sure y'all hit that PayPal. Get your shit, man.